Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the awesome 2010-2020 Toyota 4Runner. We're going to be talking about some common problems, things you need to know if you're buying one or you own one. But before we get started, check out some of my other videos. This channel is exclusively made for Toyotas by a Toyota technician. So hit that subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up and let's dig right into it. Let's do a little overview before we start with the problems. If you're looking to buy a 4Runner or you own a 4Runner, you're already on the right track. In my opinion, both personal and professional, the 4Runner is possibly one of the best SUVs that Toyota makes and, again, will ever make. They are simply the most reliable, most dependable, and most basic at the same time. And the reason they're so reliable is basic, ancient is the words that come to mind. Now, this might offend some folks, but here's the truth. The 4Runner took an old recipe that is tried and true and modernize it and just kept going at it. They did not change much. I know this is supposed to be two model years, but they're basically the same truck underneath. Again, this is the best truck you could ever buy in possibly one of the very last true body on frame trucks that are rugged, that are super reliable and actually super cool. Starting with engines, the engine in this truck is possibly one of the best Toyota engines ever made. It is literally bullet proof. As long as you follow good maintenance, I always recommend 5,000 mile oil changes, six months on this engine is particularly important because it's an older engine that inherited the 10,000 mile one year, but that's up to you, that's my recommendation. One small issue that we've seen or heard of, then it kind of disappeared, is a massive oil leak from a front crank seal, front crankshaft seal. It's just a little seal, sits behind the harmonic balancer. We've had a bunch of them leak a lot. I mean, this is something you can't miss. It just covers the whole bottom of the truck with oil. Other than this leak that is very easy to fix, not expensive, even if it's outside of warranty, the engine is bulletproof. Nothing beats this engine. Moving on to transmissions. Now, the transmissions in these trucks are bulletproof. I mean, again, nothing breaks these transmissions. However, there's one issue that I'd like to bring to your attention. This applies more to the early ones, but we've seen a scatter on the newer ones. A check engine light or the indicator on the dash for neutral drive park does not work right. And some extreme cases, the transmission shifts abnormally harsh shifting or the truck won't start at all. Like not even crank, nothing. This has to do with the park neutral safety switch. It's located on the transmission, a little bit of a hard spot to get to. We've had two problems with these. Flat out complete failure of the park neutral safety switch or corrosion at the wires from water. Again, it's not a huge deal, but the symptoms of this problem could, I mean, you come to your truck, it doesn't start, that's a huge problem, isn't it? But it's a neutral safety switch. Usually you go to test it, pull the connector, the connector is full of corrosion, you replace the connector, clean the wires or replace the wires. We're back in business for another 200, 300,000 miles. I mean, these things are indestructible. So I'm not too worried about transmissions, as long as the maintenance is followed, of course. And on this transmission, remember, every 60,000 miles, six years, is what I recommend to you for you not to have any problems with this transmission. Let's talk about the four-wheel drive system. Now, this truck, again, indestructible four-wheel drive system. I mean, you could take it off-roading, crazy off-roading, and it's still fine. However, there are a few things that you need to be aware of. The first problem on my list is a groaning, grinding noise from the front. 
And this noise only happens when you're in two-wheel drive, completely goes away when you're in four-wheel drive. There's a little needle bearing, known issue, updated part. Get that needle bearing in the front differential replaced. Life is good, not an expensive repair. A little bit technical because you need some special tools to pull it out, but nothing crazy. If you hear that and you're buying one, negotiate the price, but don't worry too much about it. If you own one of these trucks, get the needle bearing replaced and you won't have other issues with this one. Another issue is a transfer case leak. Now, this is the rear output seal that leaks. Very common, you lean under the truck, this is very easy to lean underneath it. Dead in the middle, at the back of the transfer case, you can see it covered with oil. It's just a $10 seal, probably takes a DIY two hours to do tops. I'm, I'm being very generous with time. Very simple fix. The only thing I will warn you about, if you're having a shop do this, for some reason, the labor manual calls for an exuberant time to do this one. I mean, it literally takes a professional, I don't know, 25 minutes pushing it. So shop around for prices if you're paying out of pocket to fix that leak, because it shouldn't cost a lot of money. On this 4Runner as well, there has been a lot of customers that bring them in with the rear, with a noise, grinding noise, groaning noise from the rear differential. I'll be honest with you, yes, the repair for this is to replace the carrier, but the actual problem is not an actual problem. It is something that you're gonna have again and again and again and again. It's a truck, things happen. That's just the way this truck is. I've seen people ignore that noise, go 100, 200, 300,000 miles, and they have no problems. Just the noise is there and life is good. Just continue to replace that fluid. If this bothers you so much, it's, it's a very expensive repair, and guess what? In a year or two, it's gonna be back. So if I were you, I own a 4Runner, I'm looking to buy one, and this bothers you a lot, maybe look at another car, because this is a con just a consistent issue with these and it's a really non-issue, it's more of an annoyance. One last thing on the four-wheel drive system. It is very bulletproof, it has very small issues, but one thing brings these forerunners in the shop all the time. Before we get into the issue, I'm gonna just say one thing. There's two four-wheel drive systems in the forerunners. There is part-time four-wheel drive, and there is all-time four-wheel drive. Part-time four-wheel drive, you can change it to two-wheel drive, all-time four-wheel drive, it's always in four-wheel drive. You only have low range and high range. Now, the limited model is typically the one that has all-time four-wheel drive. So this problem does not apply to this one. We're talking about the part-time all-wheel four-wheel drive. You need to put it in four-wheel drive every month or two, don't forget it. People typically use those in the winter or in heavy rain or where, they, where they're going off-roading, but the rest of the time they're on two-wheel drive and they just leave it there and forget it. Don't do that because there is a part in the front differential called the ADD, Automatic Disconnecting Differential. This is what engages and disengages the front differential. You don't use this guy long enough they're notorious to seize and they're very expensive to replace and really if you activate that four-wheel drive once a month just activate it drive down the street deactivate it a couple times just to get it moving and everything moving nothing getting seized that's all you need to do if you forget it you're gonna have problems and things are gonna get expensive and the problems you'll have it'll get stuck in four-wheel drive or you're gonna have a flashing light and everything goes haywire why do that just and if you're buying one, you better test that four-wheel drive because if this thing gets stuck on you, you just tell them, oops, here are the keys, dealership, have a nice day, I'm not buying this one. Something you need to know about this truck. Let's talk about chassis and body, and the reason I combined them together, there's not really much on body. Let's actually cover that first. This is more on the newer stuff and mainly the limited models. The front bumper and the front 
the front fender flares, they always had issues not lining up right. Again, it's not the end of the world. If you're buying one new, get it fixed under warranty. Otherwise, don't mistake that for an accident car. Make sure you look at it right. If everything looks fine, these little gaps that are not consistent or the fender flare popping up a little bit, that was something they were known for. That is not an accident car. Just wanted you to know about this one. Let's di dive in some chassis issues. There's a few, none of them are major. One of them is, the first issue is these trucks, again, being the ancient truck that they are, nothing have changed in these trucks than the, tr than the model before it. Few things have changed. The wheel bearings, front wheel bearings, they will fail and fail and fail and fail and fail. And the problem with these wheel bearings is sometimes you'll have a loose wheel bearing, but no noise. You'll just be driving, everything's fine, all of a sudden, it gets so wobbly that the brakes start having issues and it gets pretty serious. So don't worry about this too much, but do have your wheel bearings checked. Basically, if, if, you're, if you're a DIY and you're doing this, lift the front wheels off the ground, shake the wheel in and out like in this motion. If it has play, replace the wheel bearings and the hub and you're good to go. A little bit expensive if you're paying a shop, not too hard to do as DIY. You just need to press the bearing. You might have a shop do that for you if you don't have a press. Otherwise, this is one thing that's common for them. Not the end of the world. I would just get it replaced and move on. Another thing is on brakes. The forerunners don't have good brakes. I'm sorry if you own one, they just don't. You hit the brakes, the, the pedal feels weird, they nose dive all the time. That's just the way this truck is. If that's something you're, you're buying one and you, that's something that bothers you, walk away because there's no fix for it. They're, they're always like that. Another thing with brakes, they wear out very quickly, especially the fronts. You'll have brake pulsation, premature wear. I shouldn't call it premature wear because that's just the way with these trucks. Every truck has its Achilles heels. Not really the end of the world. One thing though on the brakes, they're also notorious for front caliper pistons to seize especially in the rust belt. Again, a good test for the brakes, drive the truck, say 30 miles an hour, hold the steering wheel very lightly and slam the brakes. If it all of a sudden jumps to one side, left or right, that's your initial indication that there might be something sticking. It starts with a pin that sticks, then turns into a caliper that sticks. The calipers have four pistons. If one of them sticks, that's all it takes. And calipers can get a little expensive, original, aftermarket a little better. But still, if you're buying one, do the simple test with the brake and you should have no issues. Let's talk about the last chassis item and the most serious people. I cannot emphasize how important that you're listening to me right now. If you're buying an early Forerunner, 2010, say 2013, that was originally sold or registered in this in the rust belt you know states that like illinois where i'm from we love to destroy our cars in the winter with road salt you have to check the frame now i understand toyota had all kinds of problems with tacomas tundras on the frames they're replacing frames and the whole mess this absolutely applies to forerunners and as of the date of filming this video toyota is not willing to do a thing to the forerunners that's up to them. I only work for them. I don't make their decisions. You need to check the frames. If you're buying one, you gotta check that frame. If you see it heavily corroded, walk away because you're gonna have huge problems. I see the faces of people when I tell them, yep, your frame is rotten. We can't do anything to your truck. And to replace the frame is to replace the car. So walk away. And if you own one, I, and you live in the Rust Belt, I highly encourage you to undercoat the truck properly, not the body, the frame, and make sure you wash it regularly. Make sure your car wash you're using washes the underneath, not just the beautiful body, because underneath is the problem. These things are notorious for rust. Again, it's an ancient design that works great, but doesn't like road salt, doesn't like rust very much. So be careful, don't end up buying one or owning one for a long time. And before you know, it's all rotten underneath.
Let's talk about our electrical problems. And again, this truck has zero electrical problems. The nightmare ones that uh, some uh, other manufacturers have. But let's focus on two things, small things really. First one is the back door or the tailgate door. By the way, the window rolls down on, on the forerunners for the back door. Some people seem not to know that, but there's a switch, roll the window down. If you're buying one, you gotta make sure that window works. And check the wiper, check the lock, check everything in that back door. They were notorious for water to get inside, either rust everything out where you roll down the window, it all comes shaking and, or it doesn't move at all, or all the functions of the back door don't work. There's two problems with that, broken wires, corrosion inside the wires because the insulation is worn off. So make sure you check that. If you have any problems with the back door, you need to start with the wire harness. Check it for breaks, check it for corrosion, and then see the general corrosion level inside that back door. And you always want to activate that window up and down. Don't just forget that it opens. It's such an awesome feature. I highly encourage you to use it actually. One last electrical issue, and this has nothing to do with the 4Runner. This is uh, thank you Toyota and thank you the 21st century for the latest and the greatest technologies. First one is radio problems. This is a problem across all Toyotas. Rebooting, not working right, all kinds of stuff. You just need to be aware that these radios require constant updates. They can be done at the dealership, they're not expensive. If you have issues, the first thing you need to do is unpair your phone from the car, repair everything back, disconnect the battery overnight, try that as well. If everything is not working, get a software update for it from the dealership. That should take care of all your issues. One more thing about electrical, and this is not the car's fault, or anybody's fault for that matter. The very newest 4Runners have pre-collision and laser cruise control very radar cruise control, very beautiful features. However, if you're buying a 4Runner and you're gonna lift the truck, make it look awesome and cool, just be aware that these systems might not work right anymore. And as of the date of filming this video, Toyota does not approve any procedure to modify these sensors so they would work right with a lifted truck. If you're planning to lift your truck, don't buy one with pre-collision because it might never work right. You'll always have that message and officially from the Toyota side, there is nothing to fix that. So maybe some aftermarket will figure something out, but I don't work for the aftermarket. I work with Toyota. There is no solution for that. So something you need to be aware of. So what's the best year for a to buy? This is one that's very simple. 2010 to 2020. It will be the best financial decision and car ownership decision that you'll ever make. It is possibly the best truck that Toyota makes, period, hands down. Now you know the common problems. Don't buy a rusty one. Don't buy one that's stuck in four wheel drive and you won't have any issues. I hope this video was helpful and informative for you. If you liked it, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Check out some of my other videos. Give the video a thumbs up. May the Lord bless you and keep you and you have a wonderful day.